What's up, boxing fans, comeback sports fans? This is TBE Boxing. Back at you again. Today's topic skill versus power, fury versus Engano, the predator versus the gypsy king, the post fight reaction. Let's chop it up and see what it's all about. Oh, he catches him off guard! Francis Ngannou has just scored a knockdown against the heavyweight champ! Okay, so there it is. You saw it for yourself. Uh, that was the highlight of the uh, Ngannou versus Fury uh, showdown that we saw last night. Uh, Ngannou dropped Fury in the third round. Uh, it was a glancing shot to the temple, and Fury went down. Now, <laughs> suffice to say that the whole boxing world is, is in a, is in an uproar right now. Uh, Francis Ngannou was, you know, shocked the world, and. Uh, you know, uh, the rest is history. So we're going to talk about it. So we're going to chop this up and uh, we're going to see, you know, uh, what's going to go on next. Uh, what can we expect from Nganu? How the fight went. Uh, let's talk about it. All right. So uh, the fight started out, uh, you know, with Nganu and... Uh, Tyson Fury feeling each other out to some degree, uh, you know, and uh, Ngannou, you know, was in there doing his thing. Now, Ngannou surprised a lot of people. I thought that Ngannou, uh, including myself, uh, he have a lot more skill than we give him credit for, than I gave him credit for. I thought that, uh, you know, he would gas out uh, by around the fifth, sixth round, uh, somewhere around the seventh, maybe my last or seventh round, but he didn't. He went the whole fight, which was a ten-round fight. I was, that was that was the first surprising thing, you know, that I, you know, uh, that that struck me was the fact that he went the whole distance, and he seemed like he he went the distance better than Tyson Fury did. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it was a strange fight to say the least. But suffice to say that uh, Ngannou, you know, is uh, has now become, uh, I guess one could say, the face of the heavyweight division. Basically, I mean, it was it was a spectacular uh, performance, and uh, the results uh, speak for themselves. Now, a lot of people out there saying that you know, uh, uh, Ngannou was robbed. Okay, that Tyson Fury lost this fight. And, you know, you can make an argument for that. There's an argument to be made for that, that, you know, Ngannou won that fight. Because at the end of the day, you know, nothing really happened that that much in the fight except for the knockdown. Other than that, the fight was basically even. So the knockdown is what really made a difference. So, uh, you know, there's an argument to be made that, you know, uh, Ngannou won that fight. You know, as simple as that. And, uh, you know, people out there making that argument. So, I mean, wow. Uh, all I can say is, you know, congratulations to Ngannou. He uh, did a fantastic job out there. Uh, surprised a lot of people, including myself. I thought that, uh, I, I felt that whatever Ngannou had to do, he had to do it somewhere within, before the fourth or the fifth round. I thought whatever he was going to do, he had to do it before then. Because after that, you know, I, don't, I didn't think he would have it. Uh, the endurance to be able to uh, still be powerful in the later round, but he was he was still powerful in the later round. He was you know he still had something left even up until you know the tenth round. So basically, he was dangerous throughout the whole fight, and 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 we saw that in the way uh, Tyson Fury, you know, uh, handled him uh, after the knockdown. Tyson Fury basically kind of stayed away, didn't come forward as much as he used to. 
like when you know in our fighters he didn't lean on he tried to lean on uh Ngannou, but Ngannou was pretty strong so that didn't work too you know too well for tyson fury so basically tyson fury played the stay away game you know kept him at, at the distance and 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 and, and lasted the whole fight uh and Gano, like i said it was dangerous up until the last minute he kept trying right up until the last minute to uh get tyson but he did get at somewhat uh he was trying to maintain his uh his endurance uh he did he didn't push himself as much as he could have because i thought that in the third round after he knocked tyson down he should have went for it right there and then because that's when he had a chance to finish the fight uh i, I didn't think he would get another chance after the third round and that was that was correct uh you know he didn't get a chance after the third round and after the fifth round and going on to the sixth seventh and eighth he you know at that point he was more about maintaining his uh you know is conditioning and trying to stay you know not gas out so he he basically paced himself he was pacing himself you know for the whole fight actually and you know uh so he didn't do it he didn't go all out or uh, you know i think i thought that if he went all out against tyson he could have won especially in the third round he could have he i mean he did win according to some people but he could have he probably could have stopped tyson you know uh i mean that would have been a total shocker but yeah he, he was close to stopping tyson i mean he could have if you if you exerted a little more effort i thought you know in the third round when he dropped tyson he should just went after him uh but uh you know it is what it is now again uh for tyson tyson didn't look that good in there uh i don't you know it's, it's hard to say what the situation was that we know that and i did mention the fact that he hadn't fought in a while in my pre-fight analysis that he'd been out of the ring for a while uh that you know was a factor i would think also but ngano has been out of the ring for even longer than that i i, I think uh you know uh well actually he never really boxed <laughs> so uh you know he's been out of the ring his whole career basically uh even though supposedly uh you know he started out uh as a boxer originally uh, then he transitioned to MMA. So a lot of people don't really under, don't know that. I don't understand it. They keep saying that he never boxed before. But Ngannou boxed before. He was a boxer prior, you know, before he, he, he transitioned to MMA. He wasn't very long, but he was a boxer. So he does have boxing skills. He says he loves boxing. And, he, you know, he, he, he really, you know, uh, he's going to continue to box. So he's not just going to go back to the PFL and fight MMA. He's going to he say, why can't he do both? Which is a good question. Why can't he do both? He can do both. Uh, Clarissa Shields is doing both. She's an MMA fighter and a boxer, so I don't see any reason why, uh, you know, Francis can't do the same thing. He can box and he can do MMA. Right now, you know, uh, he's the man in, 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 the, in the heavyweight division, and, you know, there's nothing but big fights for him moving forward. I mean, I already saw uh, Matchroom, you know, Eddie Aaron talking about the next fight. He, he want to see uh, Ngannou and... Uh, Joshua and that Joshua could knock out and that could stop Ngannou in three rounds. That's all he needs is three rounds. So already we see Eddie Hearn pushing for a fight between Ngannou and Joshua. Okay, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Ngannou uh, actually he's talking about he's talking about fighting Fury. He's saying that Joshua can end uh, Fury's career, but he's saying if 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 they want if if they would want uh, Joshua to go go through Ngannou first then he he have no problem with that he'll fight Ngannou and then fight the win the winner of fight Tyson Fury so this is what we already see from our uh, Eddie Hearn you know and I'm pretty sure uh Deontay Wilder is going to jump on the bandwagon at some point and you know want to fight with uh Ngannou so there's a lot of offers out there for Ngannou right now he, he has a lot of options uh you know I, like I said we already see Joshua has been offered up to him uh you know on the silver platter so uh that fight could happen uh joshua versus Ngannou. that would be a great fight that would be a big that would be a huge fight in england and so eddie hearn's smart so he, he's already making the play for that fight to happen uh a lot of people are talking about joshua versus Ngannou, the two biggest punches in, in you know in, at the heavyweight so a lot of options out there for Ngannou at this point now Again, Ngannou, Ngannou did a fantastic job. Great job, Ngannou. Like I said, he, he, his boxing IQ is a lot better than I thought it was. Uh, his conditioning is better than I thought it was. Uh, even, you know, his boxing skills, uh, you know, was a little better than I, I thought it would have been. I mean, you know, he's, he, he's pretty good in there. Uh, all he needs is a couple of months more, uh, I would think, you know, 
training, which is kind of amazing when you think about it, that a guy who, you know, has been doing MMA for many years now, uh, transitioned to boxing, and he did that well against the heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, this is unprecedented, basically. So, uh, yeah, Angano, you know, has a lot of, has a big future ahead of him. Now, let's talk about the Mike Tyson factor. So, Mike Tyson, you know, is getting a lot of accolades uh, for what happened in this fight. Mike, my man, did Ngannou win in your opinion? Did you see Ngannou win, Mike? We know you won. That was a robbery. That was a good trainer. I know. I'm not training you. He's a king. He's a king maker. He's a king maker. Okay, so as you can see, Mike Tyson, you know, was getting a lot of accolades from the crowd at the fight, uh, you know, which he should because he did a great job in training uh, in Ghana. Uh, I mean, you know, when we look at this, I mean, <laughs> you know, this thing is really, uh, you know, the whole situation with this fight and, you know, Fury and Tyson. I mean, when you think about the whole, you know, it's kind of ironic because I remember that Tyson Fury was named after Mike Tyson, okay? Tyson Fury's father named uh, Tyson Tyson because of Mike Tyson. He named him after Mike Tyson. And here we see Mike Tyson is training another fighter that almost beat his namesake, Tyson Fury. And we also saw in the press conference when Mike, you know, uh, 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 John uh, Fury uh, Tyson's dad is talking about, you know, fighting Mike. He's looking to try to make a fight with Mike Tyson. So, I mean, this whole thing is it was surreal <laughs> when you think about it, you know. But, you know, that's boxing for you. So, Mike Tyson is now the kingmaker. Uh, you know, he's probably going to be sought after to be a trainer for fighters now because he did a great job with Ngannou, and a lot of people are giving him credit, you know, uh, for the Ngannou's performance. Now, we don't know how much of it was, you know, Mike Tyson and how much of it, was Ngannou's, you know, natural ability and the fact that he, like I said, he, he actually did box previously. You know, he, he started out as a boxer and then transitioned to MMA. But we can't deny the fact that uh, Mike Tyson had a lot to do with uh, what we saw in Ngannou uh, last night. Uh, kudos to Mike Tyson. Great job. Uh, definitely looks like Mike Tyson is a top-notch trainer. Okay. Uh for you know, if if I was uh, Anthony Joshua, instead of wasting my time messing around with uh, Derek James and people like that, that never really trained heavyweight before, you know, or even you know, I would go and and, and train with Mike Tyson if I was Joshua. If he really want to, uh, you know, but I don't know if that's gonna work because maybe now uh, Mike Tyson is probably gonna be Josh uh, Ngannou's trainer, you know, going forward. I mean, if Ngannou got rid of him now, it'll be a It'd be, it, that would be, it wouldn't be a smart move. I would think that if Ngannou is going to fight again, he's going to have Mike Tyson in his corner. So it looks like, you know, that relationship is is, is going to be set. So Joshua probably, you know, won't be able to get Tyson training. But you never know. We'll see, you know, without, especially if he's going to fight Ngannou, right? So, but we don't know. We'll see how it all plays out. But yeah. Uh, great uh, performance by Ngannou. Definitely uh, one for the books. Uh, looking forward to see Ngannou again, you know, uh, who's going to fight next. The whole boxing world is looking to see who is he going to fight next. I mean, everybody's talking about it now. Uh, they're going to be talking about this fight for a while. Uh, you know, uh, Ngannou is now the man in the heavyweight. I mean, it's amazing when you think about it. He, with one fight, he solidified himself as the man to beat at heavyweight. <laughs> amazing, man. It's amazing. A fantastic, great job by Ngannou, great job by Mike Tyson. Again, congratulations to Mike Tyson for doing such a great job with Ngannou, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to see you know what these guys are gonna bring to the table next. Who you know, uh, where is Ngannou gonna? I think Ngannou said he's gonna be fighting next year. He said he's gonna be fighting again in uh, I think he said March, somewhere around March. He said he might be fighting again in March, February, March, or April, somewhere around there. So I guess, you know, he'll be back in the ring soon enough. 
But in the meantime, I guess he'll just soak up all the accolades he's been getting and, and, and taking the offers that's going to be coming his way because there's a lot of offers going to be coming his way. I already told you about it. I mean, uh, Eddie Earn is already out there, you know, uh, giving him uh, uh, Anthony Joshua. So that fight might happen next. Who knows? But, yeah, uh, great night, uh, you know. Now, for Tyson Fury, well, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Tyson Fury now. He's supposed to be fighting uh, Usyk next. Usyk came into the ring. Uh, they did a stare down, and, and that fight's supposed to be next. Uh it's supposed to be December, but it looks like, uh, you know, from what we heard from Frank Warren, they might push that back somewhere sometime next year. Okay, so we might see uh, that fight happen. It would be great if uh, if Tyson Fury would fight uh, Usyk for Undisputed and then uh, uh, then Ngannou would be, you know, could be on that undercard in that fight. That would be fantastic. You know what I mean? And then, you know, we can have the winner of uh, Tyson Fury, Usyk, face Engano, or maybe the Engano can fight. Uh, he can fight Joshua on, on that undercard, right? That would be a great matchup. You'd have uh, Usyk versus Fury for the undisputed, and then on the undercard you'd have uh, Joshua versus uh, Engano, and the winner would get a shot at the title. At that title, you know, that would be a great matchup. Uh, that would be a great night of boxing. That would be a, a sellout. Uh, boxing uh, night in England, especially if they do that fight in England. And no matter where they do it, it would be a sellout. But in England, it would definitely be something, you know, to see. The gate would be crazy, you know. Usyk versus Fury for Undisputed and Joshua versus uh, Ngannou or even Wilder, you know. So we don't know how it's going to play out. But I, I would think that, you know, those fights are going to be made eventually. So at this point, Usyk is on, you know, uh, I mean, excuse, excuse me, Ngannou is the man. Uh, he's definitely the man at the heavyweight division. You know, he's, he's stolen the thunder from Tyson Fury. And uh, Tyson Fury is going to have to, you know, uh, to get his uh, mojo back. Tyson Fury is going to have to do something, you know, spectacular against Usyk. And, you know, I don't know how that's going to play out because I'm thinking that if it was Usyk fighting tonight against Tyson Fury, he would have won, uh, you know, because it, Tyson Fury didn't look, you know, sharp in there. Now, we don't know if that's because of, you know, uh, Ngannou, that it could be all Ngannou, or it could be just Tyson Fury, just a little rusty or whatever. But, uh, you know, uh, we, we can't take any credit away from Ngannou. He did make Tyson Fury look bad in there. And, you know, one thing we got to say about Ngannou, I mean, the guy is... You know, I, I didn't know that his, you know, I, I was questioning whether or not his, 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 his knockout power would translate to uh, boxing, but he seems to have done that, you know, very well because, I mean, this guy has some real power. You can tell by the way he hit Tyson Fury with that blow uh, that knocked him down. It was a glancing blow, and he still knocked him down. And you can tell on Tyson Fury's face that he, he recognized the power. And from that, from like I said, from then on, from the knockdown on, Tyson Fury kind of basically stayed away from Engano and try to, you know, stay on the back foot for the most part. So, you know, uh, Tyson Fury recognized, and he even said it after the fight, that the guy has crazy power, and he's very powerful. So, yeah, uh, he says he's a great fighter, good boxer. You know, he, he's up there, and, and that, you know, he gave him a tough fight. So Tyson Fury didn't take anything away from Ngannou. He gave him all the credit in the world, and, uh, you know, even though, he, you know, it didn't make him look too good, but, uh, he's, you know, he, he, he told it like it was. And, yeah, Ty, uh, Ngannou power definitely transferred over to, to uh, boxing. The guy is powerful, you know, uh, probably more powerful than Deontay Wilder. Uh, I think he got a natural power that's, you know, he's bigger than Deontay Wilder, too, frame-wise. And he looks like he's stronger and more sturdy on his feet than Deontay Wilder as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, you know, things going on uh, for Engano. The man is definitely here. Uh, he looks like he's here to stay. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what he's going to do next, just like I'm sure everybody else is. So with that said, people, uh, it was a great night of boxing. Uh, congratulations to Engano. Congratulations to Tyson. Uh, let's see what Engano is going to come up with next. I'm looking forward to see, you know, what he what happens next now in the heavyweight division. As a matter of fact, 
it looks like Ngannou has saved the heavyweight division because it was getting kind of dead in there. Uh, it looked like, you know, he just added some new blood to the heavyweight division now. And the, the heavyweight division is exciting again. So, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see what's going to come next now. You know, that uh, Ngannou is, is, a, is a part of the whole mix. So, yeah, definitely. Congratulations again to uh, both guys. And with that said, I'm going to leave it there. This is TBE Boxing saying, I'm out. Got the money for me, that's pretty bitch. You gotta show me titties. This is the love that I chose, huh? On the block with the pole, huh? This is the love that I chose, huh? On the block with the pole, huh? That's love you for riches, huh? And I got the glitch, you gonna bomb me. I'ma make you get it. I'ma make you get it.